constitutional law professor Jonathan Turley argues Democrats are now laying what he calls a perjury trap for Judge Kavanaugh. In an op-ed entitled, uh, Boofed is the New Bort, Turley says Democrats now argue that Kavanaugh should be denied confirmation or, if confirmed, actually impeached by a later Democratic Congress on the basis of lies about drinking or sexual terms. Let's bring him in, Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley, to discuss. Professor, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Um, how worried are you that this is the path that we're going down? Because I know in your piece you said this isn't just about getting to what kind of judge he would be. This was putting out statements and potentially putting him in a place where he would have discrepancies or lies about things from his past. Right. There was a sort of otherworldly feeling about these, these hearings when you have a U.S. senator going literally through a year book and saying what did you mean when you told your friends this or that and that really did have the feeling of a perjury trap you know what was mm -hmm. fascinating about the democratic questions is that they really didn't press that much on the actual allegations of sexual assault they kept on trying to get him to define terms that would obviously be quite embarrassing mm -hmm. and the idea being that he could either refuse and say look that's just not a very dignified question uh, which frankly i think he probably should have considered doing um, or he might lie in which point you can say that all this doesn't matter anymore because he mm -hmm. lied under oath. If that's going to be the new standard, one can only imagine um, what the future holds for us. Yeah, and how many people are going to want to put themselves through that. Um, Nate Silver tweeted this yesterday. He says, I haven't been covering politics for that long, but long enough, 11 years, that I feel entitled to play this card. The position that Kavanaugh was being honest about his drinking is maybe the worst hill to die upon that I've ever seen otherwise smart people try to die upon. <laughs> But listen, we had people from the beginning who said, we will do, before you even had a name, we'll do whatever right. it takes to stop this person. So I, whether it's now about temperament, whether it's about drinking, whether it's about sexual terms or what he meant on a calendar, is anything um, too small? to go after? No, because the, what's being argued here is that the question is whether he lied on any subject. And because the scope of the subject matter has now expanded to the point that it defies definition, anything can be asked of, of a nominee now. And any answer that is not openly and, and frankly uh, embarrassing and, and, and disclosing of your past could be viewed as, as perjury. So the question is, is this what we want from the confirmation hearing? And, and if it is, what type of people do we expect to get? Mm -hmm. uh, if everything in your past can be brought up and you can be confronted and demand uh, demand made for you to answer. Now, what's my, my greatest concern about all of this is that we're so far removed from the original allegations. Mm -hmm. You know, they, originally they were asking about drinking and these terms because there was a reference to his being a blackout drunk. Mm -hmm. But then it became clear that that was sort of an artificial excuse because they were asking in details for him to, uh, with details as to what, who he drank with, how mm -hmm. he drank, whether he was belligerent. And then you realize that this is really a perjury trap. Well, and what about the issue of impeachment? I want to play what Congressman Jerry Nadler, a Democrat, who, if they retake the House, as many people think they will, he'd actually be heading up the House Judiciary Committee. And he has been talking about the I word, impeachment. Here's what he said. If he is on the Supreme Court uh, and and the Senate hasn't investigated, then, I, then the House will have to. We would have to investigate any credible allegations, certainly of perjury and other things that haven't been properly looked into before. Well, and a University of Alabama law school professor uh, in the New York Times, a piece entitled The Case for Impeaching Kavanaugh, says the House Democratic leadership should pledge now that if they win a majority, they will conduct an impeachment investigation to get to the truth. We know only one Supreme Court justice was actually impeached, but the Senate didn't kick him out. What do you think are the odds they go down that path? Well, you can't count anything out in this environment, but I'm really disappointed to hear these members taking such a reckless path. I was the lead counsel in the last judicial impeachment involving Judge Porteous. It's a terrible process. Uh, it's, a, it's a long one. I have no question in my mind that they would not succeed. But the precedent that they would lay with this type of move would be inherently destructive to our system. The framers created a, a type of protection 
protective zone for our justices. That's why they made impeachment so difficult. You can't reduce their salaries. And if you are impeached, it's generally for something that you've done while in office. Now, if he is confirmed, it means a majority of senators found that they were satisfied with mm -hmm. this record. Now, you may disagree with them, but to say that you're going to do a do-over would open up any justice mm -hmm. to that type of treatment. Elena Kagan was accused of being uh, either lying or misrepresenting facts in her background, particularly in terms of her work with the health care litigation. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not that has substance or not, it gives you an example that anyone could claim to have a do-over, and the court would then become vulnerable to political pressure, the very thing the framers wanted us to avoid. Well, we will watch and wait and see. But first, that would require Judge Kavanaugh to get confirmed, <laughs> and we have many steps to go. Um, Professor, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Good to see you.